Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. Today's video is all about exploring soft oil pastels. Now I'm going to show you a picture just before we start the uh, one you're going to see. And it was my first attempt with oil pastels. Now oil pastels, I am going to love them and uh, explore them and find out how to use them. But when I first use them, I'm like, oh my God, panicking, get it off. It felt like a child's painting. Uh, sorry to the really great child painters out there, but myself when I was painting it and I'm like oh my god I look like I did this when I was six but I soldiered through it and I started blending it and then I thought oh look at the possibilities now the first painting I still got on my wall because I'm still proud of it but it's not perfect <laughs> far from perfect but this is what I love about learning new mediums which is all about practicing working through the fear <laughs> learning as you go and then applying your learnings to the next one so in this video now you're going to see a second attempt at the similar kind of uh, painting so i have a reference photo but i'm not meaning to copy the reference photo it just came off the internet but it's there to help me understand well how do i frame this how do i do shapes how do i do coloring and so it's there as a reference to help me when I'm on the learning journey. So now we're going to dig into the actual painting and I am going to show you me talking through it live. So you actually get to see my reactions. <laughs> I've edited the video, of course, to save you time. It is sped up by times two. Um, but the essence of what I'm doing is there. So let's jump in and let's watch this video. I'm starting out with a very soft blue and in my mind's eye, what I'm trying to think is I really wanted to be restrained with the colors. And when I looked at the reference photo to the left, there was definitely a little bit of that light blue coming through. What I have learned from the first one to this one is you don't have to go for perfection, but it is about layering. And there is a discipline now on that one. You can see I'm just giving my um, oil pastel a quick wipe, which is, it does take a lot of maintenance by making sure you wipe your oil pastel before each application to stop the muddy in effect, for want of a better word. And I have in some of my paintings not done this and I've learned the lesson. Now, what I also love about oil pastels and in some of my up and coming videos, you will see, the lady behind me when we get to that video that you can use a scraper to scrape off the parts you don't like and start again so it is true to the essence of oil painting you can do a very similar thing as well so i'm mindful that i am using circular motion motions and getting my clouds going in the direction that i want to go but i'm also leaving gaps for some of those colors to come through but in your mind you have to think about those layering and what will those colors look like when they are blended together um and i think the best advice i can give you is start soft and build it up and keep building it up until you're happy and again it's your art so it doesn't matter if it's realistic it's just about learning the medium now when i go over with the white here that gives you an idea of what it could look like now for people who are proficient in this i apologize if i'm giving the wrong advice i'm only sharing my own experience my way so feel free to do it whichever way you want but the white really does help soften the colors but it also helps with the blending and I use my finger now you do have to watch if you have any kind of allergic reactions there are different tools that you can use out there for blending whether it be gloves whether it be specific tools I like to use my finger because I feel like I'm really connecting with it and I can differently apply the pressure but as you'll see when I go to find detail work on some of mine I use cotton buds as well because that gives me a little bit of control now I am just working on the composition of the color schemes and as you can see yellow over orange no issues with that and then i'm just cautious with my orange going into the purple i didn't want to create a brown so i had a little bit of white separating them and that white just to give it that pop of color now i'm not going to tell you what brand i'm using because i just purchased some of um whether it be um, art shops amazon temi whichever one is your preference and I just went for what looked like they were offering me a good colour range that they was classed as soft oil pastels. And I just bought one from a local craft shop to start with. And within the first 
piece of artwork I created, even though it was brilliant, I went out there and bought more because I knew that this is going to be something that one, I'm going to get satisfaction from using because I get right into the zone. It's very um, quick for providing rewarding like you don't have to wait for it to dry uh, the things that are uh, other considerations is soft oil pastels never dry they will be constantly have the ability to move so when you are handling your pictures afterwards one little smudge and you'll see I get quite a few smudges on my edge I took my time I put masking tape all the way around so that I could have a nice border rip the masking tape off look brilliant and then picked it up and I'm like oh I'd got, I'd got oil pastels, but my first few ones are all for me. So they're on my wall to the right of me. And I will show you at the end some of the ones I'm working on. I decided to go with um, the, oh my God, what is the name for it? The tape, <laughs> what, what do you call it? I know you're all screaming at the camera at me now for this tape because it's not as tacky as masking tape and it didn't leave any, um, it didn't pull away the paper. And it was easy to pull away so i went through and thought well which are the ones that i'm not going to use in any of my future art uh, and uh, i felt that that was a happy compromise and you can pick them up quite cheap you can find them anywhere you've probably got lots in your craft drawers um it'll come to me about halfway through this video and i'll shout out a random word and just remember that that's what this is about anyway people who are new to my channel if you haven't already, please consider giving me a thumbs up, a subscribe, a share. Comments are always welcome. If you are somebody who has been a member of my channel, I'm so sorry. I have been really bad for the past year. I have no excuses other than I have been working on my uh, career and um, there's been a lot of exciting things, but there's there's been a lot of time where I've just not been able to have time to work on art and share with you and edit it. I've just needed some time for me. But I feel that now I've discovered this medium, I should be able to get more regular content out there with you. Um, I know that it's not going to be as resiny, uh, my channel, as it was before, but I have to stick true to what I'm doing. I have purchased some new resins and supplies, so you will see me putting the odd one in there. But I just like the instant gratification of if I've got a spare 10 minutes, half an hour, I can come into my studio, pick up my old pastels and have a good little play around. Now, can we just stop and like look at that sky? Now, see what I mean about layering. The more you layer and slowly add and slowly blend, uh, the more your painting will give back to you. Now, uh, something else I've been exploring is types of paper, uh, types of pastels, and how does that impact your work? Now, the lady behind me, although uh, there is going to be a video coming showing you, and she does look beautiful from afar, the paper was a little bit too coarse. Uh, and that offered its challenges. Now, this paper was coarse, but not too coarse for what I'm doing here. Now, coarseness helps keep some of the crayon colour in there, uh, or should I say pastel colours in there. So when you're rubbing, some of those colours still come through and that adds a real nice quality to it. Whereas if you want to control that, oh my, uh, things just stopped, just bear with me. Technical problems there, my computer decided to shut, shut down on me. Brilliant. Oh, anyway, so yeah, adding those depth and colours and bringing the colour through from that coarse paper really does work. So I encourage you to explore different brands, different types uh, and see how that works for you. Now, I'm semi happy with my sky. So I start moving on to my ocean and I didn't get my ocean right to start with. I didn't get it right in the end. And what I mean by that is how I applied my colours and my blocking. There was lots of to-in and fro-in and back and forth and until I got a balance I liked. So next time if I was doing this one, I'd go back and block my colours and then just add a little bit. Now, the little finger worked really well here, trying to blend some of that colour and the sky so it wasn't so harsh. I really enjoyed the look of that. And then started exploring with the different colours and I wasn't trying to go for perfection. I'm being fairly loose there because I know I'm going to build in a little skyline according to the reference photo on the left. But again, it's not meant to be a replica of that one, just the essence of it. And just keep going back and forth. Enjoy the dance. Sorry if my arm's going. I've got my little dog at the side that um, is wanting a little bit of patting. So you might, you might hear Thor every now and then. Uh, but yeah, I think the serenity of um, the pastels and the ability to make them very light in shade or the blending. It's just, it's just magical. 
I'm starting to bring in a little bit, I mean, that part there is like, yeah, I could have left that right at that moment and it would have looked quite stormy, but lovely. <laughs> um, um, the application of white's interesting for me. Um, at what stage? Because different mediums, you go light to dark or dark to light. With these ones, you can definitely add light on top and bring it through, but it depends on the colour or the image that you're doing you might have to fight hard and I, I had a quick go at doing a sunflower and I worked dark to light but then I was just in this battle of trying to get it the right shade of light so there definitely are learns along the way I mean that part there just let's have a look at that it just looks like a single wave now lapping in but sometimes when you're in your pictures you um, are focused on the end goal and I, I encourage you to sometimes just step back and have a look at what it is and if your painting wants to take you in a different direction do that just bringing in some very subtle pink toads to my clouds adding a little bit of wheat uh, wheat white going back and forward and um, creating that depth anyway you can see me just looking at my art thinking what am I doing there what value can I add by telling you anyway I'm trying to do it where you can see me so that people that I've not seen much of recently uh, you see I'm here and I'm alive my hair's a little bit wet sure I've gone dark again uh, I've got Thor here uh, life is good in the good old uh, wonderful Canberra um <clears throat> I think no, I think I know. When I look back at this um, area now, I could have really kept that as a flat ocean and it'd be quite whimsical coming forward. But I decided to bring in a little bit of that um, horizon, which does add to the to the depth of it all. Um, I overcommit. Oh, I've got my cotton buds look now. I overcommitted to start with with the uh, dark colour, uh, but you. The great thing is you can keep editing it, you can keep moving it, you can keep doing it until you find that medium you're looking for. Anyway, I would love to know if anybody has tried soft oil pastels. Was the last time you tried these at school? How are you proficient in it and are there any tips you can share with the art community? Are there any brands that you would recommend? I am not sponsored in any way, shape or form. <laughs> I have just gone in there and thought, what do I want to practice with? What do I want to have a go at? And I am, um, um, the one thing I do know over the next 12 months, all my supplies behind me, I'm going to go through the boxes and I'm going to start using some of these supplies and try the mediums. I am going to, when I finish my little crush with the soft oil pastels, I'm going to try pastels and soft pastels and see how they work compared to to this but i am enjoying exploring different types whether it be oceans clouds um portraits definitely not realism but just having fun um wellness above all anyway i am going to um, just ask for people if they haven't already uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Now, I am bringing in my white again. You'll see that's a common thing for me. And on some of this, I've been lazy and I've not wiped my sticks. You can see I'm just putting them down. But if I know I was coming in for a lighter shade, I would definitely make sure that they're cleared. But there's going to be no colours coming onto the canvas that I'm not going to be able to blend in. I was a little bit concerned when I added the orange there because you can see a little bit of that dark muddy colour coming through but I semi-rescue it. Um, like I say, the <clears throat> I'd be more proficient if I stuck to one piece and learned how to master it but ah, life's too short for that. <laughs> Let's just learn how to use the oil pastels and learn from that as opposed to make a perfect piece of art is my motto. <laughs> Um, I am starting at the forefront now and this is where I, this section here is where I would do differently next time. I would, I would just work in blocks of colour and that would save me trying to fight some of the colours or the composition. Now the light blue and the white is fine and you can see I start to go up here and I block right. I feel that I added the dark colour too early. And then I had to bring it back. I mean, the end result, I'm looking at it now. You do see sparkles on the water. It is soft. I really enjoy it. I can't wait to show you the two different pictures because I'm looking at them here and one is a lot stronger in colour and then I've gone softer. 
um, but here adding the orange through to the blue if I'd have just added the orange by itself um, that would have prevented some of the toing and froing that I'm seeing here but I am sharing you this to share my wisdom you go for it in any way shape or form and have some fun yeah adding my orange yellow there <coughs> do apologize but the power of the little thin finger rubbing it I some people I've seen use cloths or uh, looks like paper towels I myself uh, didn't enjoy that so much uh, but still it's blending and it's going in okay I mean I wish I could actually uh, do it as quick as you're seeing it in here I think this is actually three times the speed because I was literally to and fro with the water here now in my mind I'm trying to look at where the sky is for me not the picture and try to make it look like those colors are hitting the water uh, somewhat so it helps you understand that that is the ocean reflecting the sky i'm starting to look where my dark areas are going because i am going to come in and build a boat soon and i try to get the background and some of the water composition where I'm happy before I apply the boat because I know that when I bring my boat in that that adds a little bit of complication and freedom for when you're coming in here and doing your blending. Now I apologise that you missed me adding the top part of this. My video stopped recording uh, but I am going to go over it also. You'll see what I'm doing. I added a little bit of brown quite roughly on the top just to add the suggestion that there is a little hut in there. Can you have a hut in a boat? A little like protected area and I'm working on the reflections now the yellow on the boat just really added that pop of the sun is reflecting through or on there maybe you could say that well there is reflections behind you if you look at it there but again it's my world it can be wherever it wants to be oh my camera's about to it's about to stop it again I saved it this time <laughs> uh, and with this one it was about being brave don't worry if it's wrong, you can keep adding to the bow, make it um, the composition more believable if that's what you want to go for. I wanted to add subtle blues to my boat, but come through with a little bit of white. And again, it was about me standing back and having a look at the boat and trying to look where the shadows are, uh, using that reference photo to help guide where my boat could be and starting to add the different shading that would go on there. So again, you see me going back and forth uh, until I am happy with that and then I always think walk away go and work on a different section and then your eye will keep cast into that area and you will then think okay that works I can do that it's been ages since I've done a little boat <laughs> uh, and with this one I was thinking about okay so where would the shadow be where would the shading be uh, and coming back to the back area again trying to help with depth so I wanted to make that part a little bit darker not too much, I still wanted it to be fairly angelic looking and I work on the mountains or the hills a little bit but I am coming in now to help with depth and I am going to add a little blob <laughs> and this little blob is going to turn into a little bit of land where there's going to be some trees on there so that also helps with a little bit of perspective but then I think oh it's a very big bit of land because my boat now looks very small but Composition's all off, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was trying to work out here now, how am I gonna add this? How am I gonna get this to look like it's reflected in the water and then start bringing in the different shades uh, and what's that gonna look like? So you see me do a little bit of dance there with the different shades of greens uh, and then how to drag it down into the water to make it look real. And you're committed at this stage, so I'm just go for it, Sharon. Just don't worry about perfection, just go for progress and see how you're going. So I wish in a way I'd have done this smaller, but you know what? It could be a very big hill that was there. <laughs> so I, I I could go back I could fix up my boat but I'm like no I'm fine with it now the delicate sea of oils I found that really intriguing how do you help with little blades of grass how do you how do you do that fine detail with these fairly thick oil pastels and again I use finger cotton buds but also palette knives can help you in a way so I just want to I think explore what's going to go on 
in that area, like the fine detail. Committing again, coming in now and creating some trees in my beautiful magical world. Now you saw a little clump come off there, but I just go in there with a palette knife, pull those clumps off and I keep going. Uh, and the more looser I wore, the more I enjoyed it, um, rather than it just being perfect and straight. But that's something else that I am discovering when you're applying your oil pastels over a thick area. Um, how do you do that? I think it's always going to come off. So it's just about controlling that and um, having a palette knife ready to pull it off or blowing it off. So you're not going to wipe it and ruin the rest of your painting. Um, yeah, I quite like that. I could have spent more time on the trees, but I just wanted them to help with uh, perspective as opposed to them uh, being perfect and um, you can see through some of them with the colors coming through but I don't mind that just looks like reflection your mind's pretty good at filling it filling those spaces for you yeah just coming back and forth working on the depth this is where I'd normally say well, I'm gonna love you and leave you let you enjoy the rest of the music but I'm gonna power through this and see if I can stay with you and bore you all to death with my commentary. Uh, I, my eye went back to the little hills and mountain and I wanted to make them pop a bit. And I'm now trying to bring a little bit of that water reflection coming through. So I'm trying to find the balance, one where I'm happy, where you can see uh, the, the ocean or the lake, the watercolour, as well as um, some of the reflections from the sky. And that was that was fine, interesting balance. Around this stage is where I started to enjoy and think, okay, I should have come up with those solid colours and work that way and blend it through that way. But I wanted to show you the process, warts and all. I, I still never really 100% was happy with um, this area. Uh, but I got to a place where I'm like, yeah, I can't work. I think you have to get that point where you're like, I can add no more value to it. This is all going to just take away from where it is that I'm working on. So there's a point I feel in my artwork where I'm just saying I spend enough time and energy. I'm not going to get it any better for what I'm working with. And I just need to walk away and call it a day. Um, yeah. And sometimes that's when I end up creating my better art when I'm not so particular just shove it in there that'll be right oh it's trying to cancel it stopped it again i'm gonna have to change my timer on my screensaver anyway the uh, the reflection in the ocean fairly happy with i kept it fairly low-key not a lot of detail in there i come down with my uh, branch soon reflected in the water but I'm now just adding a few more highlights and I really enjoyed towards the end just coming and scrubbing uh, so it was very very really no gently touching the paper with the white and the blue so it just grabs so the little nodules you've got in your paper really helped in that part because it then helped like it was glistening and added value in there anyway what have you been up to? What projects are you working on? Uh, let me know any thoughts you have on this piece. I really love the clouds. I do have to say that. And if you have watched the whole video with me just rambling on like a mad woman, I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, if you like this style of my video, uh, let me know. I can do more of this. I'm just experimenting with a few more. Now, this is where I really enjoy the ocean. See that light blue coming through and just keeping it loose, but bringing that now through to bring it all together. Uh, yeah, this is where I started to really enjoy it a little bit more. Now it's even lighter blue and then a little bit of white coming through there and trying for it not to be uh, solid. And then that way it helps see that there's that little bit of movement. Coming back through with my reflection of my boat now. Didn't want it too, too much. But yeah, I keep adding more. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> do you know when you're looking at yourself and you're like, stop now, Sharon, stop there, stop there, stop there. You can do it. <laughs> uh, I think that's the beauty of looking back at your work, though, because you can go back and see opportunistic uh, uh, things to do for future ones. And I hope that you found some value in this picture. Uh, picture? 
photo and um, stay with me till the end but you'll get to see um the original piece that i did and then the end piece uh, but it's been a pleasure uh, i hope you don't mind me sharing and for the people out there that use this medium and are so proficient in it i salute you uh, but i also understand why you enjoy working with this medium and remember share any tips and tricks um, and come back and see the next video and i hope wherever you are in the world you are safe until the next time bye bye